before we talk about intelligence, before we talk about AI, before we talk about models, learning or autonomy in robotics, like in machine learning, raw data is never usable as is. So raw signals are noisy. Raw motion is jerky. Raw control is blind. Pulse width modulation or PWM servers, unstructured wiring, open loop control. This is the raw data stage of robotics. What we are doing here, moving from PWM, that is pulse width modulation, to serial bus servers, is pre-processing the robot itself. We are cleaning signals, we are adding feedback, we are structuring communication, we are making motion observable, measurable and reliable. Only after this preparation can higher level intelligence work. Only then can planning, learning and AI make sense. This is exactly why data pre-processing comes before model building and why robotics readiness comes before robotic intelligence. Hello everyone, this is Sri from TechuTalks AI and welcome to a brand new robotic video series and this is the second video in this series. And in this series, we don't just build robots, we build them the right way from foundations up. Let me start with a confession. Most robots don't fail because of bad AI. They fail because of dumb muscles. So look at the image on the left. See the number of wires. Each pair of wires is expected to be controlling one servo motor. A single arm of a robot itself can have six servo motors or six degrees of freedom minimum. So you can imagine the number of wires expected to reach the arm itself to control individual servo motors. On the right side, you see clean, intelligent motion. See just a pair of wires connecting the servos. Today I will show you why robotics quietly moved away from PWM, servos and why serial bus servos are the nervous system of modern robots. Every robot moves because of servos or servo motors. They are the joints of a robot, just like our elbows, knees, wrists. We have made a detailed video on pulse width modulation. Our traditional uh, servo motors, we all may have seen here, this is a simple servo or in fact, one of the most common servos used in most of the toys and toy robots. So this one moves by passing a signal with different high and low ratio. So here, 0.5 milliseconds pulse width. In this case is 1.5 millisecond pulse width. 2.5 millisecond pulse width. Accordingly, the angle of rotation of the servo changes. And you need to continuously send signals of this width ratio to maintain the angle. And the strange thing is there is no feedback. There is no way we can know if the servo has moved unless we add extra encoders. There's an exaggerated image showing how such servos such PWM based traditional servos are connected to the processing unit. In this case, it is Arduino. So each server will come with three wires, power, ground and the signal. So if you have, if you have six servers for one arm, you will have such sets of three wires going to each server. Clear? So we will have 18 wires reaching the arm from the Arduino. That is what is highlighted here. And that is one thing. Secondly, number of digital I.O. pins used in the processors. Processors have limited number of I.O. pins, input output pins. So if each servo need one pin, six servos will require six pins and 12 servos panic. So this greatly affects scalability. The moment your robot grows, your wiring explodes. So this is the scariest slide in the deck. Pulse width modulation or PWM is open loop. You shout commands and hope the servo obeys. Robot doesn't know where it is when it starts. That first moment can snap gears, bend arms or injure humans. 
PWM feels precise, but it's not. Your microcontroller is guessing every step of the motion. And Arduino, you know, the best case accuracy is seven degrees. That's not robotics. That is optimism. It's like trying to draw a straight line by tapping a shaky finger. Now imagine this. What if the join could talk back? What if it said, I'm here, I'm hot, I'm overloaded? This is where servers stop being muscles and start becoming neurons. We will have a demo of this. We are talking of HTS3215 servers. And they are connected in a daisy chained fashion. Okay, so from the microcontroller, or in our case, from the serial port, three wires come. It will reach the first motor, and then from the first motor, another three wires go. So at any given location, there will only be three wires. So it is connected like this, and this last wire is not needed. Whereas in case of traditional uh, servos, PWM-based servos, for um, from the microcontroller three wires will have to go to every every servo motor and another incredible thing is from the usb controller we have three wires going to the first servo motor and then from there another three wire goes to the second motor so at any given location like i said before there are only three wires but like this, we can connect 253 servers. So just using two GPIO pins. That is just like USB devices on a computer. One bus, many devices, each with an ID. We will see how we assign IDs to individual motors. This is the moment robotics grows up. The motor tells us voltage, power is healthy, the each individual motor gives us the feedback all these can be measured i have created a python script to demonstrate this so this turns motion into closed loop control another interesting thing is on the left you see the pwm based traditional servo movement it is jittery it's not smooth it's not optimal whereas in case of serial bus based servo the servo can think and optimally move. You don't say how to move, and you say where to go and how long. There are different modes, wheel mode, damping mode, intelligent grasping. We moved complexity out of firmware and into hardware. So here is a summary. So wiring complexity is simple for serial bus servo. Number of pins used is minimal. Number of pins used is just two, and we have real time telemetry feedback, motion control, onboard trajectory planning, and protection, load, temperature, and overcurrent. Scalability excellent, up to 253 servos can be connected to two GPIO pins, and we can control via the PC as well as MCU. In this case, we will use USB adapter. So look at this, PWM 7 degrees, serial bus 0 0.066 degrees. That is a different between pointing roughly and placing a needle. This is how simple it actually is. Daisy chain servos, plug adapter, send commands from PC or Python. Now how can we control such a serial bus based servo? We can use Arduino, we can use Raspberry Pi, we can also use uh, PC using USB. So Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. I will use Mac OS to demonstrate this. So PWM servers are for toys. Serial bus servers are for robots. Cleaner builds, smarter control, scalable systems. The future of robotics is not more code. It is better communication. When your robot can talk, you can finally listen. If there is one message I want you to take away today, it is this. Intelligence doesn't start with models. It starts with preparation. In robotics, pre-processing means clean wiring, structured communication, feedback, and safety. In AI, pre-processing means clean data, 
correct formats and meaningful signals. Skip this step and no amount of AI will save your system. That is why this robotic series exists to help you think like a system designer, not just a coder. Let me switch on the power. You can use any DC adapter. I'm using a bench power supply. I'm giving seven volts. Now, if you look at the USB serial board, it has got DC, in, in, my, in my case, it has got DC 6 volt to 9 volt available here. That can be, so DC input 6 to 9 are these two pins and 8 to 24, these two pins. Depending on your servo's voltage, my servo is 7.4 volt servo. The gear ratio, etc., we'll see later. So, since this is a 7.4 volt server, I'm connecting it to the V1 side serial bus. This V2 side is for this 8 to 24 volt range. Okay. And these pins are for Arduino, which we can ignore. So, USB connection, you need to use this micro USB port, but the newer serial bus also comes with a USB-C port. Okay, so, so this goes to the computer. So I'm going to connect this to my MacBook's USB port. And then the power light comes on. This 3.3 uh, 5 volt selection you can ignore, but that is for connecting microcontroller. We are using USB. Okay, so now all the six motors are connected. All the six motors are connected in a daisy chain fashion. See here, from the USB, from the serial bus, first wire comes, goes to the, goes to the first motor, then from there it goes to the second motor and so on. These motors are uniquely numbered. Numbering process we will see later in the next video. In this video, I am just showing manually how we can move these motors. So I have created a script which will allow us to move the motors. Okay, so here selected motor is 6 so this this one is 6 so in order to see it moving let me stick a masking tape to see its movement okay i am pressing the right arrow on my keyboard See, now I'm pressing the left arrow. Remember, when we connect this to AI for training, etc., we don't have to move it like this. But before we begin assembling the robot, it is good that if you connect and test that all motors are numbered correctly and they are moving. Otherwise, after assembling everything, you find that one motor is not moving, then you need to disassemble. Okay, so now, do you see that voltage being displayed? That is the feedback that is coming from the server. So if I increase the voltage to 7.5, see, see the reported voltage also increased. And you can also see the, the temperature. And it also tells us its current position. See, when we press it, this will go back to the center. And another very interesting thing is, these motors, you can turn the torque on or off. So when we build the robot, there is a follower arm 
and a leader arm. Leader arm, we have to manually move. So there we need to ensure that we keep the torque off. Then only we will be able to move. So here in the script, pressing T can turn the torque on or off. Okay, so if it is off, we should be able to turn the shaft, but the shaft is gear ratio of this is 1 is to 3, 4, 5. So a small movement here, the servo motor will have to turn several times. So you need a little, a little mechanical advantage, bigger diameter for us to be able to turn the shaft. So after we connect the robotic arm, we will see that we can move the servo and accordingly see the current position uh, reported back to our code. So that is a quick demo of how we can manually move the motor using the serial bus controller. In the next video, we'll begin assembling the arm, starting from the base. Okay. And then we will run the same script to test the moment. That is the idea. So in this video, we covered the serial bus controller and serial bus based servo motors. If this video helped you understand why readiness matters, please like this video, share it with someone building robots or learning AI and subscribe to Techie Talks AI for deep practical engineering content. I also offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring for robotics, AI and system design, especially if you want guided real-world learning instead of random tutorials. Drop your questions and thoughts in the comment section. I read them all. This is Sri from Techie Talks AI. In the next video, we will go deeper into installing the libraries needed. That is from prepared motion to intelligent behavior. Until then, build smarter, not harder. Want to level up your tech skills without the struggle? Mentor Expert gives you private sessions, expert insights, and real solutions fast. Book your personalized tech breakthrough now.